Welcome back to another episode of Producer Grind Podcast. Karen Tina JB with me. Yo, what's good? Aunt Chamberlain in the building, man. What's going on, man? What's good, man. Shit, just live me. They been wanting this one, though. Yo, yeah, they glad want to them, be here. They want them jams, the, the online beat selling jams. For sure. I got y'all. People been asking for it. Right. And and now's <laughs> the time, man. Everyone's in the house, you know what I mean? Trying to wonder what, what way everything's going to go. So, man, we uh, definitely got a lot to talk about. Um, So, uh, just give people a little background. Um, You know, you were... uh. From Chicago, we're in the military. Um, mm-hmm. you know, has has some big placements, Lucci, Offset, Boss Life. Um, and then now you're really killing the game online. I see you posting PayPal screenshots, making ten bands <laughs> plus <Yo>. per month, <laughs> going stupid. Um, but man, let's let's talk about let's go back. Um, really just talk about how you started making beats. Were you still in Chicago when you started making beats? Nah, I, I haven't lived in Chicago since I was like probably like Ten, okay, mm-hmm. ten for real. I moved back for like one year, and then I went back to my mom in Atlanta. So that's been like that ever since. Mm-hmm. So the military, like I ain't go to the military till I was like nineteen. Mm-hmm. So I went there for four years and then got out two thousand eighteen. You were yeah. making beats before that though, right? Nah. Oh, you started what? Twenty sixteen. Mm, yeah, like the end of sixteen. That's mm-hmm. when I started. Yo, I had a bad bro. I had a terrible day at work. Like they was yelling at me and shit. Like where are you working? I was in the. Uh, in the military, they got okay. something called cranking. It's when you go and work in the kitchen for like three months. Everybody got to do it. So oh, I was in like the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, cranking, ass, cranking, cranking? Like, yeah, I was like, what's cranking? You feel me? But they, they had me cranking. So I was working in the kitchen. I was taking out trash. <laughs> bro, I was taking out trash, bro. I was washing dishes, like wiping tables. I was doing yeah. all that. So then- um, You probably didn't even think you were going to be doing that shit in the military. Nah, nah. Hell nah. Oh, like, well, let's talk about what made you even join the military in the first place. Bro- Man, I was hooping. I was at Albany State, bro. I had mm. tried out for the team. Mm. I had made the team, so I was hooping. But, bro, you got to think about it. I'm 17 years old in college at a, at a HBCU at that Albany State. That's like one of the most party schools ever. Mm-hmm. So, bro, you think I was doing my work? Right. <laughs> I was going. I was going to every party, mm. bro. I was going to practice. I was just doing everything but doing my work. Mm-hmm. So when the semester had ended, I was on um, what they call academic probation. Mm-hmm. So then they were like, bro, if you don't get your GPA up, we kicking you out. So I still was doing the same thing, still with partying, still with hooping, all that. So when I got yeah. done, I'm like, bro, you either going to go to the military or you going to be a substitute teacher, bro. You decide what you want to do. So I had, I just took the risk, bro. I went to the office and, and I signed the papers. I was gone like right. within like two months. What was, you, what was your degree that you were going for? Uh, at the time, it was accounting. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I, well, I was. Were you really interested in that, or were you just kind of going for basketball? It was cool. Nah, like, I mean, I wanted to hoop. I knew I wasn't going to the NBA, though, but I always been good at math. So I was like, just, I really was just off track. Like, I wasn't focused enough. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't that the work was hard. It was just like, I wasn't focused. Yeah. I was just worried about everything else. Gotcha. But yeah. what's that decision like being like, I'm going to the military? Was it like, <sighs> um, bro, it's like, you don't, you don't know what's coming. You, you just like, basically, they, Promising you everything that's not even gonna happen. Like, 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 what? like they like, man, what them, what's a lot of them folks told me? They was like, when you go into the military, you could basically choose whatever job you want to. That's a lie. You can't, mm. you can't do that. Like, mm. depending on your test scores and stuff, that's what you will be available for. But that doesn't mean that the job is gonna be available. Like, I went into the military, basically an undesignated airman, which is like, you gonna go, you gonna go to the ship. And when you go to the ship, you're not going to be able to run around and choose what job you're going to pick. They're mm-hmm. going to put you somewhere. And mm-hmm. they had put me in this job where I was in the hot sun, chaining helicopters down. Like, bro, it was crazy, bro. Like, yeah. it was nothing what they promised. I was mad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. But you already signed the contract, so you stuck. So, For real? How long so the you contract st- was it? Yeah, four years. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, so some people get fired. So you can't leave at all? Nah, not if you don't want, like, no dishonorable. Unless something wrong with you, like, sick-wise or something wow. like that. Mm. But yeah, I ain't want no dishonorable, but I still want to go to school. So you talk Ex- about dishonorable. Deal and stuff. Dishonorable, yeah. dishonorable. Like I mean, you really you gotta do something crazy for like dishonorable, like rape or some crazy stuff mm-hmm. like yeah. that. But you don't really gotta. Um, I mean, you could get other than honorable, but you're not gonna get your school. Like other than honorable, like smoking weed and you fail the drug test, and then after that you over with. Mm. So yeah, they just kick that. you out after that. Yeah, they just kick you out. Oh, okay. mm. So then you just went there for no reason. <clears throat> so yeah. that's crazy. So you're in the military, you're in, you're in the Navy, you have a really bad day, and you said that's what made you start Yeah, like, I was already, uh, so, bro, I wanted to make beats since high school, but when I pulled up FL Studio, this back when Lex Luger, Walker, all of them were going crazy, I pulled up FL Studio, seeing all them blocks, I said, hmm. I said, boy, what is this? 
And so I downloaded the drum kit. I knew nothing about VST, so I just had the 808s and the drums. I was trying to put the 808 down. And I'm like, well, they don't sound nothing like Lex Luger. How he be putting all these sounds in there? So I just put it down. And then like a couple years later, I think Future had dropped, uh, what he had dropped? Bro, I think he dropped Purple Rain. I was like, mm-hmm. I can't take it no more, bro. I got to make some beats. Mm-hmm. So then after that, I had got on there for real. Like I was just, at, at the uh, they call it a barracks room. It's like free housing on base. Mm-hmm. I was in the barracks room. I had I was making beats on a little ten dollar Bluetooth speaker, and I was just making them, making them, making them. And then uh, my partner Hub, he was just freestyling on the beat, so they were sorry as hell though. So I was just making them, making them, making them. And then um, eventually, like you know, I had a bad day at work. The dude was yelling at me. I couldn't fight him because if I would have fought him, then I'd have been in trouble. So mm-hmm. man, I went home and then I watched that Metro video. Like it was a it was a Metro video where he was just like going around the city. I forgot what interview it was, but like. It was when they were making Savage Mode and shit. Mm. And I was like, bro, this look cool. Like, I think I'm going to take this serious because, mm-hmm. or at least like try to learn it more because I can't do this forever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, they they tripping. So then that's really what made me kind of take it serious. And then my partner, um, my partner Drill, he rapped. I done made a whole mixtape with this man. Like, but basically he told me like, you're not going to stay in here. You're going to get out. You're going to make beats. I told him he was crazy because I wasn't hard. I sucked. And he was like, you're not going to stay in. Because at first, I planned on staying in 20 years. I ain't had nothing else she to do. in the military. Yeah, I ain't had yeah, nothing damn. else to do. Yeah. I ain't, what was I going to do? Right. I ain't had no, I ain't really want to go to school. I ain't want to do nothing. So he was like, you're going to get out. You're going to make beats. So he was the rapper. Like, he was rapping on all my beats. We was like hitting studios in the military. And wow. then after that, that's what pushed me. He pushed me to go harder. And eventually, like, the time came, like, when I got out, like, because... I made the decision to really get out after I made that boss light record. Mm-hmm. Because after I made that boss light record, I was in the middle of the ocean when they were sending me the contracts. So mm. Cinco had Cinco, Johnny Cinco, he had called me, he had said, Hey, hey, little bro, like they they trying to get to you, they trying to get you to sign this. So when they had called me and I had it and I heard Lucha and I said, I said, damn, I just made that. And they trying to drop mm. it. Like, oh yeah, I'm done. Like it was already my last year in there. Mm. So I had made the decision. I had went to them folks. And I told him I didn't want to re-enlist and I mm-hmm. wanted to get out. So that's really how all that went about, like me wanting to do it full time. So walk us through the time from you pick up FL to you get this placement. What, is it, what are you doing in the middle time? Are you, are you emailing beats? Are you posting on YouTube? Like, what are you doing in this Bruh, time to where you even got that placement? I really, really, okay, so I, I, knew, I knew I had sucked, so I had to work on my craft a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I was trying to send out beats, but they wasn't hard. Like, I clearly remember, I clearly remember me, I was sending out beats to, like, what, at the time, that's when 21 first came out, so I was sending them, like, Lotto, I was sending them, uh, I had sent some to Senko, but he actually used them, see, that's when I kind of was straight, but then how'd I had get, got how'd you get YouTube. his email? How'd I get his email? He put it on uh, Twitter. Okay. One, of my, one of my partners had tagged me, in, mm-hmm. and he was like, shit, send them beats, so I was right. like, all right, I'm gonna send them beats then, and then I had sent them, and he responded, he, he responded in the email, he was like, these hard, send some more, so I was like, bet. But like between when I picked it up, I did start YouTube and I had put up a um I had put up a free future beat. Cause future was popping. Like he still popping, but he was popping for real. So I put up a free future beat. Bro, that beat started blowing up. Like mm. it, it got like I think it got like maybe like ten thousand views. Word. And then somebody was like, I'm trying to buy it. I ain't know what the lease was. All I knew was like leasing cars and shit. I ain't know what leasing <laughs> the, I ain't know what leasing the beat was. So I'm like, nice. what is that? So I looked it up. <laughs> And then I'm like, oh, these folks selling the beats. I ain't know people were yeah, doing that. So then, really no, I ain't know. I sold my first beat for fifteen mm, dollars. Yeah. Like, I was nice. lit though. <laughs> so then, <laughs> like I sold the yeah, ever. I sold yeah. it for fifteen dollars. And then after that, I think somebody had bought the exclusive. Now they bought the exclusive for two hundred. Mm. I said, damn, niggas making money like this. So then I went and bought me a pair of J's. <laughs> but like, it was without my military money or nothing, it was just beat money. Like right. I went and bought a pair of shoes. So I was like, hey, if I'm doing this, I could, I could keep going. I could make more money. Yeah, so yeah. that's I, I kept doing the YouTube thing. Eventually, like, my subs, they kind of were growing, but the military was in the way. I think I had reached like a thousand subs and then I had to go on deployment. So that's when you like in the military, you go out to sea for a couple months. But you ain't got no internet. You ain't got no phone. You ain't mm. got nothing, bro. It's just you they out there. You don't got Wi-Fi in the boat? Nah. No Wi-Fi, bro. Wow. Nothing. So no whatever memes, whatever no. music I leave with, bro, that's what I'm stuck with. Oh, until damn. until we like pull into a port. So, bro, I could be on the boat cooking up, thinking I'm on a new wave and I'm stuck in the past. Everybody that moved damn. on and found some new some new sauce. 
So what's it like when you pull into these ports? Right? Bro, you get, bro, it's like, all right, so basically, like, we went, like, to Spain, Italy, all that. Like, they'll have Wi-Fi then. Right. Mm-hmm. So then that's where you go. You get your new music. I'm downloading videos. I'm downloading tight beats on YouTube, like, to get some inspiration and stuff. Because on the boat, you ain't really got no inspiration, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I was on there making, like, one beat every other day. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, bro, let me find some inspiration. Let me go download these beats, listen to some new music. Hopefully, I'll get some inspiration. But it, like, it was a hard, though. So while I was on the boat, though, I learned music theory. That's how I kind of know how to play the piano because okay. mm-hmm. yeah. I was reading books. So when I read them books, I came back and I actually knew how to make beats. See, when I made Boss Light, that was luck. I ain't, I ain't know no chord progressions. I ain't know nothing. I yeah. just right. pieced it together. But now I know how to do it. So mm. it's, it's different. Now, is it kind of, I guess it might, it might almost be a blessing to kind of be able to disconnect because how, 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 how long were you out at sea before you were able to get on some Wi-Fi at a port or some shit? Bro, it would be like, I think the longest I went was like 100 days. Wow. Yeah. So mm. 100 days. Case, a little more than three months. months. Yeah. 100 days, like no new music, no nothing. Would you, looking back at it, would you say it was like a growth period and you got to like, you know, focus on reading and perfecting your craft in different yeah, ways? Yeah, it was a growth period because I don't think I would be as hard as I am now if, mm. I, ain't, if I ain't really like read the, read, read the book. Like, yeah, I wouldn't have yeah. been hard like that. I wouldn't have known music theory and the number system. I use the number system. Every mm. beat I make is in the major scale. Mm. I can major scale every mm. note. Word. No problem. Like I don't do ghost notes or nothing. That's dope. And yeah. um, there's a lot of producers in the producer community who they don't know how to balance having a job or having something like the military. You know, what I'm saying something mandatory they have to do. Mm-hmm. How many time? How much time would you say you spent making beats or doing the music theory thing? Bro, I put it like this. Like I even go to when I wasn't on deployment, when I was cranky, when I was first learning how to make the beats. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I keep laughing. I feel like, I feel like this nigga, yeah, I I feel like this nigga yeah, dancing or something. Say that. <laughs> when I was working in the kitchen, all right, so I had to be up, I had to be at work at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I worked at six PM. Dang. Like, yeah, so bro, that's fourteen hours. Damn. I would get off work, go home. We'll get two days off in between. So we'll work two off two, work two mm-hmm. off two. Okay. So, bro, when I get off work at six, bro, I'm making beats till like twelve, waking up at four. Just because mm-hmm. I wanted to learn. That's why I don't, I, every producer with an excuse, I don't give it to him. Ooh. Anybody with a job, I don't give it to him. Because mm-hmm. if you want to do it, you're going to do it, bro. I was dead mm-hmm. tired. And guess what? I was sneaking off at work. I would go back to the Bears room for like an hour or two, finish a beat that I was working on, mm-hmm. and then go back to work like nothing happened. Like, that's mm-hmm. what I was right. doing because I really wanted to get hard at it. Like, I would, I would watch Southside Lives and everybody cooking up. Now I'd be like, bro, I got to make a beat. Yeah. But I'm stuck at work. So I'm like, hey, y'all, I got to use the bathroom real quick. Bro, I drive right to the <laughs> bed's room. I finish the beat I'm doing. I upload it on SoundCloud. And I just go back to work like nothing happened. Like my stomach would hurt. So you mm. said, you said you, you're, not, you're not hearing people saying that they don't got time and stuff. What do you, what do you think to, uh, to those people? You think that they just don't want it bad enough? You think they need to get their priorities straight? Yeah, they don't want it bad enough. Anybody who wants something is going to mm-hmm. get it. I, I kid you not. Like even last year. I had a thousand subs on YouTube. I told myself I was going to get the 10K by the end of the year. I did because I mm-hmm. wanted to. Like, anything you want to do, you can do it if you want to do it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like law. Like, I don't, Facts. It's, I don't know how to explain it. Mm-hmm. Like, people that go to the NBA, bro, them folks live in the gym. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, it's no, it's no off day. They in there three times a day. Mm-hmm. Like, it's no excuse. That's why I hate when people be like, oh, well, I work a job or I have a nine to five. Well, bro, when you get off, go make beats okay. and then go back to work, bro. That's just how it is. Right, like, because right. everybody can't live off of this full time mm-hmm. for right now. So that's why I tell them that. You think that's part of what they call people call like the militant mindset? Yes. Like, I read, I be reading books. Like, so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's mm-hmm. definitely be that. Now, what do you think? Like, why do you think people don't? dedicate that amount of time to it because is it just that maybe making beats isn't what they really want in life? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's not their true passion. Mm-hmm. Like, it's my true passion to make music, you know? So right. that's what I want to do. But to them, it might be just a hobby mm-hmm. or it might be cool to them at the moment, mm-hmm. but it's not what they want to do. Like, okay. Right. Now, this brings up a good point, though. How did you figure out, how did you determine that, okay, you obviously were passionate about basketball mm-hmm. and then you're passionate about beats. Why did you not, like, what did you, how did you know that basketball wasn't it? Because I wasn't getting paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you could be passionate about something, but you got to be real, too. Like, basketball not paying my bills. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I still hoop almost every day. Like, I'm in a grown man league right now. Like, mm-hmm. I hoop, like, every day. But yeah. I still make beats. That's what I live off of. That's what I enjoy to do. Like, I just knew when I cooked up my first beat, I'm like, bro, this is what I want to do. Cause mm-hmm. it's hard. Like I just made an instrumental. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. that's it's hard. Mm-hmm. Did you 
would you say that you had like a vision, like a clear vision? Like I'm, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be this certain producer on this certain caliber. Mm-mm. No, I didn't. I didn't know where my. I didn't know where my path was. So going it was just be. hard work at that point. You just putting in that footwork. Yeah, it was a hard work at that yeah. point. Cause I didn't. I didn't think like, bro. I didn't see myself like even when I got out the military in 2018. I didn't really see myself being where I am now in the beginning of 2020. Because when I got out the military in 2018, you got to think, bro. I went from a guaranteed first and 15th mm -hmm. to nothing. Mm. So, and then I was restrained for so long. So it was like, my song was still hot at the time too. So guess what? Yeah, I like to party. You feel me? Not like right. every day, but at the time though, I feel like I might've had a little problem because I was going out almost every day. Mm -hmm. I seen you. Yeah, like I was going out like, <laughs> in 2018, bro, I was going out like almost every day. Like, and I wasn't even, I was cooking up, you feel me? But I wasn't cooking up how I was supposed to. Mm, so yeah. I didn't see myself actually becoming a boss at the time. I just kind of had the mindset, oh, I got a hot record out right now. I'm finna turn up. You know, I was gone so long. I was restrained so long. So that kind of brought me in a spiral, bro. Like 2018 was one of the worst years of my life because I had no control. Mm. I was broke. You know what I'm saying? I had somewhere to stay, though. Like I had my own little apartment. I was paying the bills. But when I paid the bills, I was broke. Facts. And sometimes I had to sacrifice a bill to pay another one because I was broke, bro. Like, I ain't had YouTube. So, like, it was, I only had one record out. I, I didn't have it registered right at first. So, I didn't get the back end when I was supposed to off of the. Mm -hmm. So, bro, I was going from studio to studio. Some people knew me, so they'd be buying beats from Instagram and stuff like that, but I didn't have a consistent income. So, right. it was like, bro, something got to change. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what really led me to be like, I want to do the YouTube. Like, the beginning of 2019, I said, bro, I'm going to be on YouTube all year. Because I had to, bro. I had, something had to change. Like, my lifestyle was crazy. I had mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So, that's what made me want to do it. Let's talk about, um, so, you know, you, you're coming off the military. You said you're kind of, you know, all over the place as mm -hmm. far as spending money. You don't really have a lot of money. Have one record out. And then, I feel like that's like kind of like, that can be make or break for a producer in that time period. Because if you kind of get, I'm not going to call it lucky, but if you say you get get a lucky placement from sending an email or something, that doesn't come with the relationships all the time. And it's mm -hmm. not like you can just be pulling up the studios. Yeah, I can I can go pull up on this rapper, this rapper, this rapper. And it's it's hard to get that second placement, would you say? Yeah, it it, it is. Because if you get lucky, like, it's can't not guaranteed. It. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't repeat it. Like, now I can, like, I use Lucha for an example. Like, we, we got a good relationship. So I could be like, where you at? Be like, studio, pull up. All right, bet I'm pull up. Shoot, get records on there. Like, I just had two on the deluxe album. You know what I'm saying? Dope, dope. But, like, you got to establish relationship. Like, mm -hmm. that's really that's really why I kind of encourage producers to kind of get out there more and 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 show they... Like, everybody... Now, I ain't going to say... Everybody's not a star. Everybody don't want to have their face out there. Some mm -hmm. producers have so much talent, but they don't want to have their face out there. That's fine. But... Like, as far, if you want to, if you want to be in that position to make a relationship and stuff like that, though, they're going to respect you more of you in the building and mm -hmm. not awkward and stuff like that. Like, when I'm in the studio nowadays, it's kind of like, if they don't know who I am, they're going to respect it just by how I carry myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm not scared to talk to people, so I'm going to go talk to you and then we're going to, you know what I'm saying, we're going to take it from there. So, I be, I'm a firm believer in making relationships with the artists that's like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Common so, sense. I watched your video um, where you were talking about, you know, selling beats online and you said, it, you know, when you when you were chasing the placements and stuff, it was really difficult. Can you talk about some of the difficulties and stuff? The difficulties in chasing placements, bro, you don't you don't really know where these folks are. But some some artists don't even check their email. Like I got some artists where I send beats to their phone. But the only way I did that was by talking to these folks like. Mm -hmm. Some of these artists don't have emails or they don't check emails. Like, you might think you got an email. Like, you know how producers be having, like, these email lists and stuff like right. that, bro. Some of these <laughs> emails don't even exist, bro. Like, right, right. yeah, they don't use them. So, it's like, the difficulty in it was I didn't know who to send the beats to. Like, it was just one point in time where I really only probably had, like, three artists to send beats to. I'm like, bro, I got to I gotta do more than this. So, mm -hmm. like, I had to start, I had to start maneuvering, bro. I had to start, like, moving around and... That's another reason why I tried to go the online way. Because, bro, you got so many people getting bangers off of YouTube. Mm -hmm. You got yeah, Keo yeah. with a diamond record. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I know right. Keo since 16, bro. So, bro. he mm -hmm. been doing the YouTube thing. So, it's like, bro, you got it. It's more ways to get placements than sending the emails, bro. I ain't even going to lie. I barely send emails anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm still <clears> killing <throat> the game right now. Like, I don't send emails like that. Mm -hmm. I just do everything how I want to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the email game kind of. 
kind of played low key. Mm. Would you say you learned that from being in the studios, just seeing the engineer pull the beats up, mm-hmm. or just that's one that's one way? Cause yeah. one way they'll just walk in and just tell the engineer to pull up some beats. Right. And at some sometimes shit, they getting their beats off YouTube in the studio. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the engineer usually had beats or they'll have a certain producers who already loaded them up with hard drives mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like they'll be like, hey, pull up, pull up the take key pack or pull up da 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 pack. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. you just be like, damn, what about the niggas that emailing uh you, mm-hmm. you ain't checking the email? Right. Like, yeah, yeah, you gotta pay attention to that because boy, they they not checking their email like that. They really already got their team unless they like coming up as an artist mm-hmm. then they'll check the email but the, the the rappers who own the stuff already bro you gotta get the beats all the stories you hear they the producer be like oh I gave it to their manager or oh I did this I did that yeah. it's never oh I sent the email he just opened it up and made a banger it's uh, almost right. never like that nowadays mm-hmm. so yo like, from, from your experience are managers good about checking the emails and when you, when they get sent beats and stuff like that Uh, sometimes uh, um, I mean I would say like with managers like you kind of want to just push up on them and be like, give them a hard drive or, you know what I'm saying, send it to the manager's email. Then the manager might pull it up, be like, hey, this hard. Like, they'll show it to the artist and then they'll get on it. And then after that, it's a it's a story in the making. Mm-hmm. But, nah, the, the artist email, though, that's kind of like a lost way because you got so many producers that want to get the email. Like, if an artist puts his email out on the internet, bro, they going to flood the email. With. It's over with, bro. It's too many beats in there. They're not going to see yours. Like, so mm-hmm. I don't really do the email no more. It's right. just, it's a lost right. art. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> one, now, now go ahead. One thing I noticed, like everything, every time you made a decision, like to ch- that elevated your career, it was because based out of a necessity, like you started making beats because you needed to get out of the military. Mm-hmm. You started uh, uh, the YouTube because you needed money or a consistent income. What would you say to the producer that's comfortable right now? Someone that's, maybe making some good money at their job, they coming home, eh, they may make, make a beat or two. Like, mm-hmm. what do they need to do to where they can get, feel that that necessity to, like, take it to the next level? Man, whatever. You you got to want it. If you comfortable, then you just going to remain at the same level. I really mm-hmm. can't I really can't tell the person who comfortable with their nine to five making one or two beats, hey, you need to do this because they're comfortable. Mm-hmm. Right. When you got a person who comfortable, they're not really going to change their ways. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that's like... I, I can't really tell them to do something that they are already comfortable. They got to want it for themselves. Mm. So, and so you were you were kind of talking about the the struggles of getting paid and stuff too in that video. And you were pretty transparent. You said like your first royalty check was six bands. What, mm. what was that like, <sighs> bro? Six bands at one time because the military, bro. I was like an E three, E four, bro. I was getting like maybe like nine hundred thousand dollars like every two weeks. So Damn. like yeah, so. <laughs> Wait, like, you said, wait, say like nine hundred dollars or a thousand oh, okay. every two okay. weeks. I thought you said so, nine hundred thousand oh, every two no, weeks. No, 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 I would have never been. No, 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 and I was just buying, yeah, I bought like shoes. I was just <laughs> buying everything, bro. Before I knew it, it was gone. I said, mm. I said, I got to wait another two months. Mm. And it's going to decrease. If you don't got more songs coming, yo, yeah, it's always going to decrease. Ooh. So, yeah. It's was that, gonna was that publishing or what was that? That was BMI. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was BMI. I got two, I got myself on BMI and then I got my publishing on BMI. So I always get two checks. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. And now what? what what is that money coming? Is that coming from streaming? Is that- it's coming from streaming on the platforms okay. like Apple Music, Spotify. Like it'll show you. They got a long list where they'll show you like how many streams and stuff it'll come from. Mm-hmm. So like if it got a lot of plays on Apple Music or Apple Family, it'll show you how many times it got streamed and the amount of money that mm-hmm. you earned off of it. And then it'll just mm-hmm. total up at the top. So when I seen 6,000, I was lit. Like, I was happy. I was right. like, boy. <laughs> now, explain real quick. You said you have your cell phone BMI and then you're publishing on BMI. Mm-hmm. Right. For anyone that doesn't know what that is, explain why would you need two accounts? Well, I got two accounts. My uh, my boy, Big Corey, like, y'all know Big K. He yeah, real yeah. knowledgeable. He was like, bro, you need your own publishing. He was like, go on BMI and, and pay the fee and, and get your own publishing. So I named it Aunt Chamberlain Music. So now I kind of just, I get paid for Anthony Phillips and then I get paid for Aunt Chamberlain music, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's it's kind of you gotta have your own publishing, really. Mm-hmm. So I would advise like all producers, like go get your own publishing. I think it's like a hundred some dollars on BMI. Like you just need that, right. mm-hmm. kind of like an LLC. 
Is, yeah, is there yeah. is there one of them that the majority of the money goes to, or is it kind of evened out? It's, <laughs> really, I want to say, mm, which one makes more? They kind of even, but one makes more than the other. I can't remember which one it is, though, but one makes more than the other. Mm-hmm. So would you say that, let's say, you were, you were side by side with another producer, right? And y'all both accumulate 900 streams, or let's just say, uh, let's say 5 million. We're not going to talk small numbers. Let's say y'all both accumulate 5 million streams. With you having a publishing company, how big of a difference would it be from somebody just collecting out the strength of out the strength of just normal points instead of instead of having an actual publishing company? Normal points, you gonna make less. You gonna make less just off of points. All I mean, what's the what's the average what's the average producer like three points? Three points, yeah, yeah. like three points or something like that. That's like you, bro. You need your publishing. That's right. where you are gonna mm. get a lot of your because ain't the point system. If I'm not mistaken, ain't that like the um the master side? Yeah, the yeah, master, master side, two hundred. Now I ain't gonna lie, like we had all our masters, bro. All of us would be rich, mm. Facts. but we don't so. That's like you need your publishing. Like if you just out here collecting masters and no publishing, bro. Like nah, that ain't nice. gonna work. At the town hall too, um, uh, they were saying a lot of the guys up on the stage were saying that the majority of the time you don't even ever see money from those points because most of the time the project doesn't recoup. So they Mm-mm. said that the publishing because publishing it starts from day one. It's not recoupable no matter how much the label invested in a project. You know, what I mean, I know you know this. I'm just saying for the people at home. You know, you see that publishing, that mechanical and stuff from day one. It's not recoupable. It has nothing to do with the master side. Um, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like like you said, like the yeah. publishing is really you the, need, the money you you're going to see. Yeah, you need that publishing between that publishing and that front end. But I even give y'all a secret, though, mm. with, like, with like the front end, bro. In my position now, I don't even text. Because one thing about it, that front end, like a loan. Now, if I'm on Chris Brown album, I know his album gonna recoup. Oh yeah, right, I'm, yeah. I'm taxing. You feel <laughs> me? But yeah, for yeah. like these these tier two, tier three rappers and stuff like that, bro, I'm not charging a lot. Like people be trying to get ten bands and stuff like that. That's for the people who not getting money every day. Right. So then your your publishing check gonna be smaller because little do you know when you get that loan, you have to recoup that back to start mm-hmm. profiting. Right. So mm-hmm. like, nah, I didn't I didn't do that. That's why I made. First of all, I made the beat by myself, and I'm just using Boss Life Record. I got plenty more, but I'm just using that as an example. I got one five front end. That's why my back ends were so big. If I didn't mm. miss the one cycle, I probably would have got like 10 reps, mm. mm. but I missed it. So that's oh, why so I got So you don't like even six. get that money if you miss it? I don't think you do. Wow. Damn. I don't think you do. It's just floating? Or they, or they, I think, they I think it might just be floating, like, because I don't. I, th- I missed the whole cycle, bro. Like, Remember Rico talked about the black box? That shit floating. Like that. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's floating. floating. That shit no, weird. You didn't, that's weird. You would think like you would get it on that check. Like yeah, that. I did. I thought so too, but I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, nah, these ain't the numbers. Like, I think it's black box or something like that. Wow. I think being mm-hmm. my life, if you miss a cycle, I think they hold it. Wow. I'm not sure though. I could be wrong, but I just was looking at the numbers like some ain't adding up. Mm-hmm. All right. But, yeah. Mm. I wonder what that process looks like to go in to get that black box. Exactly. Like, yeah, is it yeah. hard? Like, I'm not there's sure. There's got to be millions and millions of dollars in there. Because how many people are I think people, I think, exactly. I think like, there's, I think there's definitely like companies going and doing that, reaching into the black box. Cool, no? yeah, They're going to take a percentage probably though. They ain't doing it for free. BMI's probably just flipping that shit. Yeah. Um, probably, I gotta, they probably got a clause <laughs> like if you don't get it in 90 days, it's ours. Yeah. <laughs> so we, you know, a lot of these recent episodes, like especially with Toomp, um, T2 shout out to both of them we were talking about cash flow in the music business mm-hmm. and stuff like that and how you know getting those those uh, royalty checks and you know you got the cash flow through your internet business and stuff like that uh, and we always talk about a producer just like you you know what I mean um, where you're in a position where you are getting that money and so say you were a producer that didn't have this cash flow and a pub deal comes across the table for you know, X amount of dollars, six figures, 150, 250, a lot of people are quick to sign it. Mm-hmm. Even less. Some people be quick to sign like a fifty thousand dollar pub deal. Are you even cons- are you even thinking about pub deals like that? Or do you are you are you think you'd be more of like a long term player, like collecting that that cash flow? I mean, honestly, I got some situations on the table now, but like my manager Flip, shout out to Flip, you know, he uh he the same manager for Tusi, you know. Like basically, we just not trying to rush into a situation like we kind of just trying to stack up the the records and stuff like that and then do something but Mm -hmm. it's definitely some situations on the table and i'm not gonna be in a rush to sign for 150 200 and then like my percentage is messed up so it's important to have a manager too like if you're a producer you got to find a trustworthy manager but like Mm -hmm. i feel like that's the smart thing to do because i definitely know what you mean like it's a lot of producers out there boom Fifty thousand, right. let's go. Right. Or boom, one hundred fifty. Like, exactly. let's go. Like, right. but then after that, like, you fucked up because right. now you got to first you got to recoup all that back. 
and then your percentage is not looking right. They just know you're going to, because $150,000 for these big companies is really like a dollar, a dollar right, big chickens. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, so they not tripping. You you so excited because you never seen this amount of money, but little do you know you just got yourself in a bad situation. Right. So, Facts. yeah, you got to be smart about that. And especially mm. like a lot, if it's a co pub situation, giving up half, that's that's like a terrible loan. That's Ooh, a terrible That's a terrible. That's a terrible loan. Because that's all it is, the loan. Okay. They're, they're, they're giving you your money up front. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? In exchange for, yeah, just let us own half of yeah. it. It's going to look gonna be, good, though, because you're going you gonna to go get that new car you want it. You, gonna, you might get a crib. You know, you might do that. But then in the long run, you're like, dang, I shouldn't have signed that contract. Mm-hmm. Like, I know plenty of people like that. So I'm not in a rush to do anything. Mm. Like, we, had, we had plenty of talks about that shit. And it's like, like he was saying, like, bro, if somebody, if somebody didn't know you, right? And they're like, yo, I got a million for you. That's what they see in you. Mm-hmm. They, you know what I'm saying? They know they're going to make multiples. Yeah, you know what right. I'm saying? So it's more like, and I still have yet to un- fully understand. Like, I know you talk about this a lot, but what's the point of a publishing deal? Like, I just never really understood it. Like, why? Kind take- of. Well, the, there's like, no points on publishing. No, no, no. The point of it, yeah. like the purpose, like nah, oh, get, the your purpose. Money, oh, get your money, get your money up front. Oh, like, it's basically just, bring you. They bring you in. They bring you in. They know you got. You probably got hot beat. So what they gonna do is they gonna put you around all the artists that's under their label, mm-hmm. and they're gonna you're gonna make records with them. They gonna put you right there. To make the records with them, so you're gonna be on all their projects, all these. But so that's what what's promised. That's what's promised. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! No, it is. No, it's cap. It's yeah, cap. Yeah. It depends on who you are, but that's what they sell you. That's what they I'm be saying. like. They be like. They gonna put you here. They gonna put you here. That's why, man. That's why I express. You gotta have a name behind yourself because if you got a name behind yourself, these folks gonna. They they might. They might not. It's on you though. Really, it's on you. These publishing deals. It's on you. Don't. It's on you. Don't look right, so it looks like yeah. we're going to give you your money up front and we're going to say we're going to put you around all these people. They try to relocate but, you and all it's that. Like, they, might, they, might move you to, they might move you to California and you you lit. I'm in L.A. Yo, I right, live in right. L.A. Man, you paying L.A. rent. Mm-hmm. Then you got to get around. They not putting you in front of the artists. So you still, like, you in the same position. You just got a loan out now that you going to owe these folks, like, Man. On your own money. Alone now. Yeah, yeah like own money. Yeah, so, so it's what, deep. What would you say to these producers at home that, you know, don't really got nothing going, and but they're thirsty for that check? What's the best advice you could <laughs> give them to? And I don't mean it in a bad way because a lot of, you know, we're all man, thirsty for a check. Become, man, become your own boss. You don't even got, you don't even have to sell beat. Like, you could be a sound designer. You could be, and you could be an engineer. You could, mm-hmm. you could do DJ. You could do everything. Like, you may draw kids. Like, bro, mm-hmm. be your own boss. And invest in your own brand because that's what I had to learn how to do because now I went from relying on placements and doing nothing but I already made 60,000 it's March mm-hmm. right? yes I made 60,000 bro like already technically like right. with the net with the nets and stuff like mm-hmm. that and YouTube revenue yeah. so it's all it's like become your own boss because now I'm not thirsty to sign no deal like mm-hmm. I'm not thirsty to do nothing because I'm good I make money every day so it's Thanks. just like you got to become your own boss because when you get in that position, you kind of get a little smarter. Mm. Mm, hell yeah. So yeah, and you can invest in yourself. So that's what I would recommend for people to do because I had to wake up and do that. When you say in investing in yourself, what are you investing in? I'm investing in my business. Like, like your knowledge you talking yeah, inve- about? Yeah, knowledge, knowledge, your business. Like, because I'm putting money towards like what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I don't like not ads and stuff like mm-hmm. that, but just like kind of yeah, like promoting, promoting myself and doing that. Like even me buying like, you know, producers really not buying jewelry like that. Mm-hmm. I went and bought some because right. one, I can. Two, is investing in myself, like my own brand. Like I got 100 points, a mm-hmm. chain, you know what I'm saying? Like a watch, like. It, it is, it's a good thing because when you walk in studio, like I like when I walk in studios now, it's kind of like a different energy. Mm. Yeah, Because yeah. like they looking at me like, who is this? Mm. You know, he making beats, but he having jury. He lit. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like it's, it makes it easier for you to kind of like be respected. Like it's Thanks. weird. Mm-hmm. It's weird Thanks. though. Because when you got, everybody knows like you can have hard beats, but how far is that going to get you? Everybody making hard beats nowadays, bro. Thanks. Like I did a beat critique. I had like a hundred some people in there, bro. All their beats was hard. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. everybody not lit like that because mm-hmm. they they don't have a, a brand. They're just mm-hmm. a producer. Mm-hmm. So it's it's different. Like you got to have more to it than just making beats. And that's one thing I had to learn. So I'm I'm gonna ask you because I remember when Zaytoven. Remember Zaytoven? He was like, he was basically saying like your appearance and all that shit matters. You know what I'm saying? Like for your brand. So I'm gonna ask you like, what is a good brand? What does a good brand look like for a producer as far as you being able to go and get those deals? In your favor and stuff like that. What does a good brand look like for a producer? A good brand, like as far as appearance, 
I mean, or just like all a brand. around, like being respected. What? How do you? How does a producer? What does a producer? What does a producer look like that's respected brand wise, mm. appearance wise, all that? You I know feel what like saying? you gotta. I feel like you gotta turn it kind of have an artist mentality. Like nowadays, Thanks. like I mean, I got a um, I basically got a distribution deal with Stream Cut. It's about the end though, but I'm still good with them. Mm-hmm. So like, if I want to drop a song, like I'm about to drop another single, but basically like. I'm kind of treating myself as an artist instead of a a beat maker or a producer. Like that's how I'm moving around. Cause now when I go to these labels or if I if I'm about to get into a situation, it's not like I'm just an average Joe. Like I'm right. somebody you could bring on the team and you could win with. Thanks. And so that's what I've been doing. Like that's why I've been building my YouTube up. Like I'm about to start dropping like videos on my YouTube. Like, like vlogs? No, nah, like music videos. Music videos? Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. about to start dropping like real songs on my stuff. Have like you produced rapping? by me. Oh yeah. No, nah, I don't rap. I'm not doing the whole producer rapper thing. Mm-hmm. Like it's only a couple people who I can respect off of that. So let's talk about that though. So what do you leverage in relationships with artists to to be like how do you how do you talk to artists and be like, I want to put this out under my distribution? I just tell them, I'll be like, let's do a song. Like I'm about to drop one uh, with Tusi actually, because he just dropped his album. But I want to drop a single with mm-hmm. us on it, with me as the artist. I know I did one with like Lucci last year. Like really, I'm gonna do. I'm planning on doing my own album, but I'm gonna do that in like 2021 because wow. I know by 2021 it's gonna be like super lit. But like I definitely I want to start dropping singles with like artists who not even own yet for real right. because don't they be the ones with the super talent and people always want to hear new music. Like, I'd be super excited to work with new artists. Like, even with the whole Tusi situation, I met him when he had, like, 90, 90K. Now, he had half a mil, mm-hmm. and I made, like, seven beats on the, on the project. Like, I like doing stuff like that. Like, even, like, you could use, like, Rod Wave, for example. Rod Wave got all his beats on off of YouTube. Now, he done made a platinum record, you know, by my boy SB. Shout right. out SB, but, Hell yeah. like, I feel like that's the route to go. Like, y'all see how Cash Money AP came up, how he did it? Yeah, he did yeah. it just like that. Now, he in the industry, easy. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that I like I like that. That's that's really what I'm aiming to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, right. So instead of shooting instead of shooting from being this producer at the crib and shooting all the way to the top, shooting emails to people that's already at the top, you should be at the crib and trying to plant a seed. That was you saying? Yeah. Like yeah. they they tell you this all the time. Like even Zay told Ben said this. People don't want to listen Who? to Zay though. Zay told Zay told okay. Ben said grow with the artist. Nobody yeah. wanna listen to that. They wanna go up to right. the Roddies and go up to the futures right, and right, stuff. Right, right, it don't right. work like that. <laughs> right. Like you just not finna go from here up to here. Like right. you gotta you gotta start somewhere, bro. Like it don't work like that. Mm. Mm. You can't do it. So I know I know everyone really wants these online beat selling gems. So we gotta we Let's gotta go back to and it. talk about your journey um to selling beats. So I know we we kinda left off, you said uh you had uh, sold the exclusive for 200 got a pair of J's. What was the progression after that? Man, uh, it took a long pause because of the military. Once I got out, like, I said, I think G, G Herbo dropped Swervo. Mm-hmm. I'm a big G Herbo fan. So mm-hmm. I was like, bro, I fuck with this album. I got to do something. So I was just dropping all kinds of tight beats, though. But they wasn't getting no views. Like, they were getting, like, 100 views, 200 mm-hmm. views. I'm like, bro, I ain't selling nothing. Like, I need to do something. So I started researching. I was on there, how to sell beats online, like what to do, keywords, all that. And then I ran into Drum Dummy video. Mm-hmm. Shout out Drum Dummy. I, I, and he said, stick to one artist. He made six figures. I said, six figures? Hold on, wait a minute. I'm finna look at that. Mm-hmm. So he was basically like, just kind of stick to one lane. So I was like, all right, bet. Who? I downloaded VidIQ. VidIQ mm-hmm. kind of oh, tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, VidIQ sir. tell you yes, like what's, what's relevant, but low competition. Oh, all that the key. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like so. <laughs> I went on there and I was like, bro, let me look up some people. And I went and looked up. Uh, I went and looked up Herbo. Low competition, mm-hmm. high search value. And mm-hmm. I like, all right, Ben, I'm finna start dropping it. So when I start dropping his beat, I start seeing my views go up. Start mm-hmm. going to a thousand. Then it start going to five thousand. Then they start going to ten. So I did her beats all the way until probably I want to say like I still do them, but I did them all the way to like October, November. I hit ten thousand. Mm-hmm. Once I how many 10, were you doing? How often were you dropping? But I was dropping two. I think I was dropping two videos a day. Mm. Mm. Damn, every yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like two. Sometimes one, sometimes two. It just depending on what type of mood I was in. But I was consistent the whole year. So when um were you cooking them up that same day, releasing the same day, or how what was that work for? It like? depends on my mood. Like if I cook up a super hard beat, I'm posting it. Mm-hmm. Cause like it's hard. I want to post this today. But I be having beats in the vault to where I can just set them up and then post it. But it just all depends on my mood and how hard the beat is. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I definitely was doing that. And then I seen that Roddy was about to drop the album. 
And I had, I had, bro, I had one Roddy Rich beat. It did 10,000, but I wasn't posting them. But I was like, it did 10. So. Clark Cox, stop you real quick. Yeah. Were you making money at this point? Yeah. I, look, so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something funny. I was going to Georgia State mm-hmm. for. Shout out GSU. Yeah. I, yeah, was going yeah, to, yeah, I was going to Georgia State. I was going to Georgia State. I probably was there for like a year. And um, after the 9-11. So the 9-11, what they do is they pay you once a month on the first. What two, is it? What, what? $2,000. A 9-11? GI. The GI bill. Post After 9/11. you leave, they still pay you? Yeah. Wait, what? Like, no, like the post 9-11, when you get out of the military, you go to school for free, but you get housing allowance. Oh. So, wow. so you get two bands. If you go to school for 30 days straight, like the whole month, mm-hmm. you get two racks. But if what? like let's say let's say you go on like a holiday or something, bro, you only get paid for the amount of days you're in school. So really? if I go to school mm. for seven days, bro, I'm not getting two bands. I'm getting like five hundred dollars. Mm. So yeah, so I was doing the YouTube, so I was making money. I was kind of making money, and then I told myself the first month I make over two racks, I'm I'm done going to school. Mm. I, don't, I don't need. I didn't even want to go to school. I'm there and I'm just in the classroom like this. So. I you made. Do, you were facts. doing it for that check, basically. yeah. Yeah. So you had the GI. I did what I had to do yeah, to yeah. do what I wanted to do. So yeah, going right. to school okay. was literally a job for you because you get right, the check right. from the military. Yeah. Man, I, I, had to make, I had to make good grades in order to to, wow. to make the money. So wow. I was in school making good grades. Yeah, that's, so not, a, that's, not, a bad that's motivation. not a bad route at all. It's a like, good motivation. To yeah, I, I was in. Yeah, I was making good grades, and then I was getting paid. And then, like in the summertime, bro, you only got to do like two classes to get paid. So I'm getting paid all year round. Just wow. from doing school. Wow. But I'm using that as time to get my beat stuff going. So when I first, I first made 2000 I said, bro, I'm doing going to school. Mm-hmm. I, just, I, just, I just did it. I made 2000 And then YouTube approved me for the ad stuff. So I'm mm-hmm. making the money off of there too. I was like, yeah, I'm done. Mm-hmm. So after the first month, I made two bands. How many months in were you? Man, I think I made two bands in either October or November. Or so last eight year. months, eight, nine months in? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I finally made 2000 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's that's off of Beat Stars. I probably made two thousand in a month before that, but it probably just wasn't showing up all on Beat Stars. That's when I made my first two racks off mm-hmm. Beat Stars. So then the next month, bro, I tell you, Roddy was finna drop that album. I was like, I'm finna start doing Roddy type beats, bro. I made this beat. It's called Everybody Know About Sky Red Beat. I made mm-hmm. that beat, and um, in like five minutes, made it in five minutes. I posted it. I ain't think nothing of it. I kept coming back to my YouTube page and it was growing so fast. Like, bro, when I tell you VidIQ was like 2,000 views in an hour, I'm like, mm, mm, I'm like, Brian, views like, per hour going yeah, crazy. I, I'm like, like, bro, I never <laughs> seen, I never seen nothing like that before. Yeah. And, and then eventually the sales just start going like that. So I'm like, I'm like, damn, like it's doing mm-hmm. that. So Sky Red going crazy. Then right after that, I uploaded another beat. It's called Endless Pain. Did the same thing. So not every Roddy beat I was posting was ranking, doing like crazy mm-hmm. views. So everything just selling, 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 selling. And bro, like in December, I made what fifteen thousand yeah. in a month off of off of just selling beats online. And then the YouTube ad revenue, bro, in December I made six thousand. Mm. So really, I made twenty one thousand. Yeah. Then January, boom, the beat still going crazy. So then guess what? Twenty thousand off of off of making just selling beats in January alone. Boom, February fifteen, like. It just, it's not stopping because mm-hmm. now it's solidified. So like it took me a whole, it took a year of just holding it down, going to school, doing what I was supposed to do and then the beat stuff finally took off. And, and posting like, two beats a day, one to two beats yeah, a day. That's, mm-hmm. that's People consistent. are getting frustrated yeah. like, bro, that's a couple, yeah, couple, once a week. Couple, yeah, because yeah. they hard-headed. I, to, I gave them the gyms. I told them. Yeah, I right. told people like, like I told people, I said, bro, just do these steps. It's not going to happen overnight, bro. I had to do this for a whole year, mind mm-hmm. you. And now it's, it's, it's doing straight. And I tell people the same thing. It's not gonna work for everyone, though. I, I'll Facts. be the first one to tell everyone it's not gonna work for everyone. Whoa, whoa let's back up. Let's back up, though. Well, the reason why it won't work for everyone is because you took some crucial first steps, which was downloading the vidIQ. You went to a route that had a low competition, high mm-hmm. search volume, and you laid the foundation on like SEO fundamentals. And I think that's something that you need. Mm-hmm. We need to talk about first because yeah. you could mm-hmm. post all the beats in the world trying to be the number one guy for future, but you you got way too much competition. Way too much right. competition. So let's go ahead and elaborate. Yeah, on way that. too much. That's why I said I, I went and started a whole lane, the, bro. When I tell you, I had some people come down here from Chicago to record or to pick beats from me. Mm. Like they they flew down here, they came, they got the beats, they paid me. All for the straight they went the back. Line. Yes. I'm I'm known in Chicago as mm. the G Herbo man. Like, I swear, like <laughs> well, I swear, cause I got family up there. You know, I go yeah, up there, mm-hmm. and they like, bro, like everywhere we go, they playing your beats. 
they at the school freestyling That's funny, to cash it. money AP started with yeah, that like, movement too. Yeah, they yeah. going they going crazy up there, brother. The G Herbo wave, mm-hmm. like so they was just I started a wave. I made it cool to make G Herbo beat. Mm-hmm. Everybody was doing the the sample G Herbos and all mm-hmm. that, bro. I was doing other stuff with the G Herbo. I was mm-hmm. just going stupid. So I feel like I started the lane with that. Now you see people trying to make G Herbo mm-hmm. beat and, yes, and do the that. lane already got filled. Yeah, up. and the lane already like I still mm-hmm. control right, the so, lane. So how do you? How does someone listening that's been like, oh, shoot, okay, I've been making these types of beats. I need to go ahead and find me a lane. How do I go about finding a new lane? Because you said you just like G Herbo yeah. and you just happen to look it up. So yeah. what should they do to figure out what is a good opportunity? Where is a good artist that I could focus in on and I, just take this lane? I mean, really, the way I did it, it wasn't even just G Herbo. I was like, I'm finna take over Chicago real quick. Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna come back down to Atlanta. So last year, I was like doing G Herbo. I did a little dirt. I was doing, I did a little bit of polo, little, uh, little Dirt, Polo G, and I was just doing all of that. And eventually, like, everything just started blowing up for me. I took over Chicago. Then I was like, all right, bet. When I switched up to the Roddy, then I just took over the, the United States. Mm. Like, no cap. Like, mm. everywhere. It's just, they just buying the beat. So, mm. it was like a strategy. Like, that's why I be like, it don't matter where you live at. You could take over wherever. Mm. You just got to have a plan. Facts. Like you can you can do whatever you want to do. I took over a whole state from Atlanta, mm. and I'm not even up in Chicago, mm. so it's kind of like just crazy how that happened. Now you said that you picked up three key gems from Drum Dummy. I know the first one was to pick one artist. What were the other two gems? Uh, be consistent, and then uh, what was the have your own sound? Because mm. that's definitely like what I did too. Like I had my own sound for like what I was doing. That's why everybody knew to come to me when they wanted that certain sound, and now it's just like stuck now. So that's how, because at first when I was producing, I, I didn't really have a sound. I kind of was listening to people on the internet or I go listen to a song and try to replicate it and stuff. Now I don't do that. I just cook, I just cook up now. Mm-hmm. And that's why I know I got my own sound because I just do certain stuff with mm-hmm. my beats that people just don't do. So mm-hmm. Now what about like the um, the email marketing and stuff like that? Are you into that at all? Mm-mm. You don't collect emails, Mm-mm. no email list no. or nothing like that? That's that's No. No, no. texting? No nah. taste marketing? Nah. Mm. nah. How come, how I don't even that? need that many people having my number. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, not I, your I number. It's not oh, it's like, oh, it's, like, it's, y'all talking about like some stuff sauce. like with like Legion and all of them, yeah, what they be doing. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't do that. Yeah, but it's it, cool. It's cool though. Like I seen like they be doing like the funnel thing and mm-hmm. the the free beats and the Facebook ads. I kind of looked into it. I got I got more to learn. I'm not gonna discredit them because them boys yeah. making so much money. But mm-hmm. I'm not gonna discredit them. I still I'm still learning about it. So when I learn about that, then I might turn up even some more. Yeah, because I know I want to do. I definitely want to like like I'm looking into real estate. I'm looking into that which y'all talking about. So I'm I'm trying to make more money. Like I'm trying to turn up. And mm-hmm. really like become like a millionaire low key. Mm. Like I ain't even. Now, how come you never uh, looked into Facebook ads just for your current business model? Because I th- I heard you say you know you, you're not in it. Never spent money on ads or nothing. Like I that. just never knew about it. I never. I didn't know about Facebook ads for Beats until I watched that video. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know about it. So I'm looking to try, it, but yeah, I'm looking to try. It. I still got to learn because I don't know if you have to have like a super big like. Facebook page. I don't think you do though. Nah, I, nah, this yeah. is like paying for the ad. So yeah, I'm looking into trying it because I can afford to do it. So it's like, why not invest and then make more money on top of it? So yeah. 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 But for some people, I seen it work. For some people, I seen it doesn't. So really, I, I would, I would, I'm gonna give you this. I wouldn't say it's something that works for certain people. What it is is you being able to intentionally contain your audience. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? For whatever you want to be, you don't have to be like everybody else, but. What it is, is you basically containing the audience and you being able to pitch however what you want to. You know what I'm saying? Whatever content, it's so nobody misses it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? All the people that's in tune with you, that's what that's for. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, see, I was definitely looking into it, though, because that was an interesting video. Like, I was like, these boys making a million. What? <laughs> what? Like, what are they doing <laughs> selling cocaine? <laughs> nah, <boy. laughs> Yo, they, they really, they getting in there with that. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I've been getting real big on email, just at least collecting emails and, um, you know, keeping people updated that way, even without, like, having the funnel and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I feel like for producers at home, like one a great starting point is because, you know, beat stars let you hook up like MailChimp and stuff like that. So every time someone buys a beat from you, you got their email. So like weekly, you can send them links to your new beats. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And stuff like that. Just to keep them, you know, in tune. Because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of artists, they go, they just go and type in G Herbo type producer. They might end up buying a beat without really like connecting like, mm-hmm. oh, this is a such and such beat. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. then next time they come back and be like, man, let me go back to that channel. They kind of just go back to searching again. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, they put, y'all put, y'all put me on something. Same yeah, thing I'm like a, I'm Instagram. Yeah. Like, 
You can have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. How many we have? One sixty. We got one seventy. One sixty. We got one hundred sixty thousand followers, but if we weren't following up with the people that support us, you only gonna make. You know what I'm saying? Like with the algorithm and everything, you could you could post and say, "Yo, I got a kid out," but that shit ain't gonna do shit. Right. You yo, know what I'm saying? Yo, Unless somebody ain't. see it and fuck with it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, definitely. definitely. I feel that. I feel that email thing though. Yeah, no, I fuck with the emails, man. I, I slept on that shit for the crazy, for the longest. Bro. <laughs> I always, I'm like, he told me about it low key though. Bro. I just ain't, no, I never did. You think she was lame? Bro, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we <laughs> wouldn't even lame be like, bro, shit, that shit lame. We not about nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody about to do it. Nobody. And I'm like, I was just saying, like, man, no one's gonna open their email and be like, oh, let me go look at this. But man, that, <laughs> I, was, nah. I was dead wrong, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, so man, so you, you're at a great point now. You say you're making like 15, 20 bands a month. With all this crazy stuff going on in the world right now, with it's unsure how the economy is, my first question is, have you noticed in this past week any increase or decrease? I've heard some people say like sales are going up. I've heard some people say they're going down. Mine stand the same. Stand the same. Yeah, they I bro, I made like bro, on a bad week, I probably made like three. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like mine stand the same, bro. I don't know. And you still been staying consistent? Yeah, I've been staying consistent. See, I just, I got a sale right here. I <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, I'm staying consistent. I still post it every day. Like, I just, um, I took a couple trips and stuff like that, but now I'm finna be like back on YouTube like super mm-hmm. hard. Cause yeah. like, I this year I ain't been posting it every day. Mm-hmm. I not on no lazy stuff though. I just been living life kind of. Yeah, yeah. Cause I been I was working so hard last year, but now mm-hmm. I'm finna, I'm finna tighten back up like hey. going over. I'm finna lock back in. Mm-hmm. But, I was yeah. I was seeing you while you were in Miami. You said you couldn't wait to get home. Was there a reason? Like, Bro, you- that's that's not my wave no more. Like <laughs> like all that ratchet shit. Like I don't I don't really I'm I'm kind of bougie now, bro. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I ain't with all that, man. They down there fighting it and doing all that. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, me and my boy, we just went. You know, he was off work. I was like, let's go. But you know, that that's just not my scene. Like right. I ain't I ain't with all that. I'm a whole different person. Now. I can't be doing all that. <laughs> so, yeah, I already get home. I already make some beats. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. Get what's up uh, <laughs> for a producer right now watching? What should that day look like? If they're like, you know, I want to be like, and what should that day look? I like? I mean, bro, I can't even say because my day, I don't have no schedule. Like for real, for real, for real mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't have a schedule, bro. Like, I mean, okay, so look, I put it like this: when I wake up, when I wake up, all right, bet you know, brush teeth, wash face, do all that. I will probably make some beats. Then I get on 2K. Like, I might make, like, my, my boy Drill do this too. I call Drill all the time. He he in his little gamer chair playing the game. Like, I get, I probably make about three beats. I get on the game. I get on the park. I get on the wreck or something. And then mm-hmm. after that, like, I get back on the beats. I make like four and then get back on the game. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I get back on. Like, I'll just rotate because I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and just make 10 in a row. Because mind you, bro, I'm, I'm slowing down on the loops too. Like, I've been cooking my own melodies up, so it kind of take a little longer, but, you know, it used more brain power. Mm-hmm. So now I'm taking breaks. Like, that's my schedule so I can stay creative. And then I do that probably throughout the week. On Sundays, bro, I like to, like, go out and, like, just enjoy the day because, you know, to get my mind relaxed. And then Monday, like, I'm right back at it. Like, mm-hmm. that's usually my weekly schedule. But, like, last year, I would say last year, bro, I wasn't doing really much. For real, really? for real. Like I wasn't really building the whole YouTube. Yeah, while I was building the whole YouTube, bro, I was I was locked in. I was in the lab, bro. I was mm-hmm. cooking up like nonstop, posting, then, you know, chilling. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. doing that. Like I was really trying to get on that. Like once I got set, that's when I was like, all right, I can have a little free time. But bro, yeah, if you like, if they watching me right now, mm-hmm. they wondering, like, you gotta lock in. Mm-hmm. You gotta have a schedule. And then like now, I'm doing some stuff like I'm really, I'm not glad the coronavirus out, obviously. But I'm saying like it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? It's keeping me in the crib. Yeah. So now yeah. I'm, I'm I'm finna stack this money and really just cook up and, and right. be on the game because that's just what's safe right now. But right. I'm not really tripping out. I'm long, excited bro. to see how much people, like when people look back at their their bank statements for the month, how much the money, how much less money they'll spend this month just by staying in the house. <sighs> no, my, no, my shit gonna look immaculate. Like no, <laughs> no top what? golf this month. I be mean, <laughs> yeah. no top golf this that's, month. That's what we ran into yeah, top, yeah. Golf. Yeah. top golf. <laughs> top golf. <laughs> no, bro. Like I just did. I I had just made some investments and shit this year. So like I definitely didn't spend a lot of money, but I I saved yeah. a lot of money too though. Mm-hmm. Like I ain't just been out here just blowing all my cash and stuff like that. That'd be ridiculous. I don't know how mm-hmm. anybody could do that. Mm, so, well, yeah, I, I know, know I do know, but like not me though. <laughs> I ain't moving. I just not moving like that. Like everything is just smart for real. Yeah. Like I just, I mean, some days I wake up and I just be like, let me go get this. Like, and yeah. then some days I just, cause I know when I bought this watch, bro, I I literally woke up 
it's crazy because I kept seeing Instagram ads. I was thinking about getting it. And I'm like, damn, I don't know if I want to go do that. I kept seeing Instagram ads with Rolexes, Cartier, all that stuff. And I was just like, God must be telling me something. Let me go. Let me go. <laughs> let me go market. get. Yeah, 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 like let me just, let me, me go get. Dog, let me bro, go get the rolling. Like, like <laughs> let me go do it, bro. That was, I guess that's that was just, your goddamn. That was your goddamn. Uh, Mike, you kept talking about that shit, and he, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit, yeah, yeah. I guess it, it <laughs> had to all bro. the marketing agents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the marketing right, right. is crazy. That's just a big thing. Period. Man, they got people thinking it's God talking. to Yeah, that's how you know. You know, you're a great marketer. Be like, yeah, the Lord told me to get this rolling right here, man. You can't do the yeah, yeah. microphone in there. Man, hey, I guess it's the government. The government run everything, bro. But yeah, I don't know. Marketing is, yeah, big thing. Beats use marketing. Like, yeah. that's yeah, all yeah. it is. Now, now talking about um, staying in the crib, man, are you, are you an Uber Eats? Are you an eating out type of guy? Are you a, you a self, self-reliant self cook type of guy? Man, I cook some food, but I kind of, it's, bro, the thing about you cooking the man, food. He said I'm bougie. The thing about right. cooking food, though, bro, is like, you got it. The, the whole waiting process, the cleaning up. That's why I be eating out a lot, bro. Because I'll be it. like, Same. bro, when I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I'm going to get food ASAP. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it's no waiting. Like, I got to go get it now. And so. it's like you could be cooking up while the Uber Eats on the way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Everything is time management, bro. Like, you got to yeah. think. When you cooking, you could be cooking up. So, right, right. yeah, it's just like that. I think um, people have broken it down to me. Like, you got to figure out how much your hour's worth. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to look at how much you make. And then divide that by the amount of hours that you're working per day. And that tells you how much, like, to so say, like, you break it down. You're like, man, I, I make $60 an hour. You know what I mean? At mm-hmm. the end of the month, if you calculate everything. And it's like pretty much anything that costs you less than 60 an hour is really not worth your time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's better to just outsource it or whatever. But if it's if it's more than 60 an hour, then it's like, all right, man, I can I can take the time to do this. Because right. it's cheaper than spending yeah. $200 an hour to get it done. I'll be, right. be breaking that shit down. And I'm glad they beat stars. Like, shout out beat stars. Shout out A. Shout out um, everybody that's in beat stars. Because, uh, like, with the whole thing with them, they got this app now. And it really keeps track of, like, they been had the website. I'm, I'm checking the website, but the app makes it way easier to, mm-hmm. um, to look at it. And, like, when I looked at it, Basically, like, okay, so it'll be one day. I ain't going to lie. Like, it'll be one day. Like, one day, maybe, like, I made $75. I was like, 75 Because I was like, usually I'm making, like, over 250 Yeah. And then the next day, I made 2000 Oh, mm. shit. I made 2000 off of selling beats, like, shit. in a day, bro. Like, I said, I almost passed out. Like, it was just crazy. They were coming like this. Like, it's almost fake because you'll get one notification, and it'll be, like, 200 You'll get another one. It'd be like five, and it'd be in the same minute. And you like, bro, somebody has to be scamming me, like because mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, like it's, it's almost it's, it's almost <laughs> crazy how fast it is coming. So like, bro, like you just gotta stay with the process. You do have to keep track of that though, because like you said, like how many hours you working? Quite frankly, bro, if I had to say how many hours I put in making beats a day, bro. Man, probably like four to five. Mm. And you got to include the uploading and yeah, all that shit too. Yeah, the uploading and all that. So like four to five. I don't I don't think, I think anything more than that is kind of like excessive. Like some producers be like, you ain't doing nothing. Cook up, cook up. Like why? Why am I doing that? Mm. But I'm going to have a lot of beats regardless. Like why am I straining myself making all these beats, bro? That's not the formula. I swear to God, bro, I can make a million beats this year, bro. That's not going to be the formula to me succeeding, right. bro. Thanks. Like I don't want no producer at home thinking, I got to make goddamn 30 beats a day for me to blow up. That's not how it work, bro. Mm-hmm. I promise you. I, I don't want none of y'all straining y'all selves because it's already, you already looking at a computer screen all day. Mm-hmm. Like, and so you using that much brain power. That's why, uh, bro, that's why people be using loops like this though, bro. And, and my thing with loops now, bro, and why I'm finna slow down on loops yeah, is because I wonder, I wonder, you got, yeah, you got, you got all the, you got these loop producers and they're so talented, but they're sending their loops to 50 producers, bro. So, I might be like, bro, I got a hard beat right here. Mm-hmm. Then I then I catch my boy or something. He used the same loop and he just got it placed with somebody. I'm like, now nah, I got to, I don't got to throw the beat away, but I want to now. That's mm-hmm. why I'm finna just make my own melodies and stuff like that. Cause then I don't have to worry about nobody having the same beat as me. Cause I know how to do it. Loop save time. And um, I'm looking, I'm looking to sign producers like right mm-hmm. now. Like I'm finna start signing producers like right now. And it ain't on no messed up contract stuff, nothing like that. It's kind of like a team thing. And they gonna win. Like I'm probably gonna do, I might do like three, but they, yeah, like I gotta have a guitarist. I gotta have somebody who like hard on the key and something else because I'm not gonna lie, bro. This year, yeah, last year too, bro. I put on a lot of loop producers, bro. I put on a lot of loop producers. Like I introduced them 
to mm. the game, and, mm. and now they didn't they didn't took all they getting placements, they doing all that, but I brought them out, mm. and really I'm not gonna get credited for it. I don't want to, you know what mm. I'm saying? I don't want to be like, hey, I'm the reason your career jumped off. But bro, yeah. it, being honest, bro, I brought a lot of these loop producers out mm. to the spotlight because mm-hmm. my my stuff then blew up with them. So it's like. I got to get something out of this. We might as well be a team and, and, right. and win because, like, right. that's a smart thing right. to do. And I know a lot of talented producers, they probably got, like, 100 followers on IG, stuff yeah, yeah. like that. And those kind of the ones I'm looking for because mm-hmm. I'm going to have them blow up. Like, Definitely. that's just how I'm doing. Yes. I'm not doing no messed up business, bro. Like, that ain't even what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're, face card clean. we're even trying to, uh, we're, we're about to get into the exclusive loop type of thing by like dropping kits for a certain period of time only or mm-hmm. only, only, you know, releasing a certain amount. So it's not like this is a pack that you can get. You know, we're still going to obviously drop the packs that, you know, people can go get because, you know, I mean, there's still a demand for those, but definitely dropping some special ones where it's like, yo, these are only available for a certain amount of time, 48 hours yeah. a week mm-hmm. or whatever, you yeah. know, a certain mm-hmm. amount of copies. Um, But man, one thing that caught me that I really related to is you said, the days where you're looking like, man, $75. Because I know yeah. the ups and downs have driven me crazy in the past. Yeah. You start to think like, damn, is it over? Is today yeah, the last is it day? Over? <laughs> is today the last day that I make money off this shit? <laughs> no, nah, bro. It's, it's, you, got, you can't think like that because it'll scare you. Like, I ain't going to lie. Like, my YouTube had caught flame, bro. Like, like probably like November through like February, bro. My stuff, every video I put up was getting over 100K like, wow. or like 50K or something, bro. And like now, like it, it kind of slowed down, but my sales haven't. You can't get scared. Yeah. Like my boy, my boy Drill, really, really made shout out to them. Like yeah, they yeah. told me, like they like, why your page hot? They like go on ahead and you know what I'm saying, go crazy. It's gonna slow down for a little bit, but don't mm. let that stop you from posting. Mm-hmm. Because like my my videos now still getting over three, four thousand views in a day, but yeah. like it's just not going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Million here, 100,000 here, like, you know what I'm saying? Some videos doing like a little 50,000 and stuff like that, but you don't get discouraged. You just keep posting because my sales ain't stopping. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't look at it and be like, oh, damn, it's over. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? This is going, you can't just, you can't maintain it. I, I haven't even been posting every day. Yeah. I've been out here living life. So, like, it, you can't get discouraged, bro. Like, you just got to keep working. Like, you can't be like, damn, it's over with. It's nah, a I'm mental here. game just as it's much as It's a mental, anything. yeah. This beat stuff is a mental game. You can't let it get, you can't let it fuck with you, bro. Because, like, it will do that. Right. <laughs> it will yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, you just got to keep going. Like, everything with this is a game. Like, it's like chess. Like, you just got to play it right. If you play your move wrong, then you're going to go down a bad path. Like, I know mm-hmm. some producers that then fell off, like, just from, Thinking that it's over with, right, and stuff like that. Like you can't, Hell do nah. it. you can't at all. Like because <laughs> blessings come out of nowhere, bro. Like I done met a lot of people just off of just chess moves. Like even when, um, man, even when I know Polo G, Polo G came down here last year, and I had new Tusi, and he was performing. So I'm like, hey, can I can I slide to the concert? You know what I'm saying? And that's when I met. That's when I met Polo. That's when I met Dirt. That's when I just met a whole lot of people. I already, Mulatto was there, you know, she would perform, but I already know her. So it was cool, but like, I, I'm not scared, you feel me? Like, I, I I went up to Dirt, I had talked to him, because I had a song with him already. It's out now to down me with him and Kane Vaughn, and then uh, mm-hmm. I was like, you know, we got a song together. You know, I'm from the rack too. So, and then he had went to the club the other day, and I popped up at the club just because I go to the club, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, he there, so I'm going to pop up. And I went up there and talked to him like it was a regular day, you know what I'm saying? And that, like, it's just networking because now yeah. I'm going to be able to get to him directly instead of hoping that, you know right. what I'm saying? Same thing with Polo. Like, them boys really cool if you just don't be on that weird shit. Like, Thanks. yeah, like, it's, just, it's all about networking. And that's why I be trying to tell folks, like, sometimes if you want to get to an artist, there's a way to get to him. You just got to strategize because, mm-hmm. you know, it's all about strategy. You can't just, like I said, the email game and stuff like that, where these boys don't check their email. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, Dirk told me he only got an email. Mm. He don't <laughs> like right. so, but there's people paying for his email address. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, hey, bro, yeah. Whole, this whole producer, like, bro, he he had a joke one day talking about because I the the little PayPal screenshot posting oh, yeah, talking yeah. about producer scammer. People actually thought oh, I was yeah. scamming. I'm not scamming, bro. Like, <laughs> there's actually people out here who scamming. I know somebody. Well, I don't know them, but I know of them. Like, I probably been in the same building as some of them. Hell like, yeah. I'm not fucking with them. Like, bro. <laughs> that scamming shit Like bro you got You got producers Taking fucking loops From Looper man Calling it their own shit Then it's mm-hmm. actually Getting placed right, Then right. you like 
the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how that work? Like, it's just a lot of lame shit going on. Yeah. I, I'm not messing with it. Like, even the PayPal, I know people got PayPal, people swiping for the beats. Like, mm -hmm. it's just all Yeah, we got to talk of, about that, man. The yeah, chargebacks like, and stuff like the that. Chargebacks. Like, they, they getting, I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure just because I got street, I got street knowledge. Like, they getting these profiles or whatever and paying mm -hmm. for the beats and then people are looking at their transactions like, well, where did this come from? Because mm -hmm. I remember one time I checked my PayPal because, you know, I be clearing my PayPal out like every two weeks like a regular check. So then I checked in one time, my stuff was in the negative. I said, hold on, what's going on here? And I had to check my case. I had like five open cases and I'm just like, come on, y'all. So right. I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to protect myself from that because that shit lame. Like, y'all really... Nice. Y'all messing with my money. Now I got to refund everybody. The refunds be like, bro, my lease started $50. You right, feel me? So right. now I'm refunding $200, $300 worth of cash. Like, that's, that hurt anybody. I don't care how much anybody. money you make. Fact. Fact. So I don't know. We got to find a better way to do that. Mm. Hopefully, man, they, they they figure out something with this. Because I feel like this fraud shit is, is definitely going crazy everywhere. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, especially on something like Beats where you just pay for it like right. clothes. You right. know what I'm saying? Because Beats start where you pay for it with a debit card, credit card. Same so. Way. Who's saying you can't get a profile or get somebody's card and, and use it to buy the beat? Like, right. It's just, it's a lot of stuff that people do. To buy beats, know. though, that's crazy. Like, yeah, right to buy, like, it's really that serious. Right. Like, to buy beats, like, you, you scamming need, for beats. Like, you don't need to rap, bro. You don't even need to rap if you're going to do that. <laughs> don't, don't tell that to TJ, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, think he's swiping. So, um, you know, we're just like, you know, because I've been really tuned into just watching like all this financial stuff, this the news, and you know, I mean, maybe I'm watching a little too much. You know, they're really talking about the possibility of a recession and the economy going down. It's kind of why I made that post just to like, mm -hmm. just to get the community, at least let's talk about it. You know what I mean? Like not saying it's going to happen. Let's talk about, you know, what's going to happen, how we can be affected if, if shit, you know, starts to go look like, you know, recession or whatever. Um, have you thought about that at all? Like, Man, what? Yeah, I think about stuff like that. I'm just like, you got to think of the avenues that's kind of not going to get hit because of that. You know what I'm saying? And like, Bro, you always, well, my thing is, and this is my thing, like, just the ad revenue, like, the ad revenue, bro, because even if we in a recession, people low-key still going to watch YouTube mm, now. Definitely. I don't know how the YouTube going to affect that, because, you know, the stock, I'm not saying stock market shit and all that, because we, we way past that. Right, but, right. Like, you know what I'm saying? It might drop, like, the view count money side mm, might drop a facts, little bit like ooh. that, but I, I still feel like it's a way for producers to eat. Music not gonna stop. Shows might slow down a little bit. I'm pretty, bro. Corona. We're we're so medically inclined right now, and uh, so far, bro, from the people I've been seeing with coronavirus, that's not a hundred years old, bro. They've been perfectly fine. Like it's kind of just like a little flu, but I don't I don't feel like this is gonna last forever. I really kind of feel like the government is making this situation more than it is right now. Right, but they yeah. they they just being precautionary though because of what it could turn into, but. Right. You know, I don't feel as if the situation is that serious. Like, right. I mean, so, I mean, but it's good to be prepared for that, though. You know what I'm saying? Because if it does turn into a, a, um, a recession, you want to be prepared for that. And as mm -hmm. music producers, especially with us who treat this as full time, you know, like, we got to be aware of that. Because right. you never know what's going to happen. Like, the sales might slow down. Or, right, right. You know, the revenue might go down on the ad. So, we just got to be prepared for that. I mean, really, what I say right now is kind of just save your money. Like, don't make yeah, no crazy yeah. investments. Like, I mean, everything going down in price right now. But I would definitely say, like, save your money. Yeah. Like, because, well, you spend all of it. And then we really do go into a little <laughs> recession. Like, right. Uh, hard out here, I'm telling you. Soup hey, kitchen. It's got. <laughs> uh, what did you say? Tomato <laughs> basil? Yeah, tomato <laughs> basil. Let me get an extra slice of Honestly, all this stuff is just really making me um, realize, like, the stuff we've been talking about with T2 and stuff like that. Like, yeah. real estate and those, like, less risky investments, like, the stuff, like, you know, when when everything's People going great, yeah. when mm -hmm. everything's going yeah. great, it's like, man, yeah, let me run up this check. I'll get to the real estate. I'll get to the real estate. But, man, I feel like. I'm looking back at myself like, damn, like, kind of wish I would have been more on it. Like, end of last year, like, when I first started learning about it. You know, everything happens in time and stuff. Right. But I definitely think a lot of the experts are saying, the people, like, the marketing experts and the people I, I tune into, they're saying, man, pe all these kids are home. They People are saying YouTube views are going to go through the roof. So, you know what I mean? Like, YouTube, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Company, these big-ass companies aren't going to stop advertising and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. I feel like that YouTube mm -hmm. revenue, um, I feel like because artists are... Um, not able to make that money off of touring, I feel like they're going to A, be selling features for cheaper. 
mm. and then B, I think they're going to be putting out more music because yeah. they're going to be stream. Like, yeah, let's mm -hmm. get that out of that streamer more music money. Videos yeah. too for people to things for people to watch. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that's more placement opportunities for producers. I think, I think it, it's it it's like go. a it's like a lose win situation type thing. It if it gotta, if it happens that way, yeah, I don't really see it happening that way. But if it does, I, I kind of see it like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean. It's just, I don't know, this is different. 2020 is kind of crazy, you know, yeah, with the whole already. thing with Kobe, Pop Smoke, mm -hmm. Corona. Like, you just like, what it else is going to happen? how fragile life really is. You yeah. can get so comfortable just like right. the day-to-day. -day, yeah. And this is switch like that, bro. Shit weird. And then this is over with, so I don't really know. It's with really, them. man, it's really got me like, yo, like you did, you, you don't think when shit's good, like, yo, tomorrow everyone could be rushing to empty the grocery <laughs> store. Yeah, right. bro. Yeah, like, to the gun store. Bro, like, I, hit the, bro, I hit the grocery store yesterday. No, well, it was tissue. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't like hand sanitizer and stuff. I got a bottle at home, but now I got to treat it like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I gotta treat my hand sanitizer. Like <laughs> the, other, the other week, I'm looking at like hand sanitizer. That's nothing. Now right. I'm looking at it like I need it. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like, bro, let me just get half a pump. Yeah, let right. me just get yeah. half a pump instead of just you know getting the whole thing. So I'm just like, you bro, toilet paper. You like, all right, let me just use three squares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, you this, this no. kind, of, this Corona, this Corona be funky as hell, bro. This so right, This is on Mel's like. I don't know how to feel about this. It came out of nowhere, literally. Yeah, bro, but it's just just imagine like back then, like the bubonic plague, all this stuff. Like, oh, influenza? Hit. Oh, influenza was way it, worse. That's why I'm saying the flu was way worse than but this. just think about right, it. People right. just living life. Next thing you know, your family members at risk, all this stuff is happening. It's a complete pandemic, but you get so comfortable living day-to-day -day life. It's like, Facts. you never expect it. You exactly. never expect it. Exactly. Now we got to think about more stuff in deep. Like, but we be in the crib anyway, so right. like we kind of quarantine ourselves, but I mean, I don't like to be in the house every single day, mm -hmm. but I mean, it is what it is, really. Man, this goes back to the beginning of the conversation when you asked them, the people that are comfortable, this should let people know, like, bro, you should never Ace be comfortable. Said, what? Because yeah. you could have been a waiter comfortable making good tip money all of a sudden, yep. shit, now I don't got a job. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, mm -hmm. now they really don't have no business and it can't be more than, like, and then it 50 ties it back people to the or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just crazy. Yeah, like, it ties it back to, like, the real estate investment. Like, you're comfortable, but you need those things that create stability in right, your life. Right, you got to right. have those. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you're making right. off of a per month off of anything. Because at the end of the day, it's always a job. Every, whether, whether you're making beats, it's a job. It can all be gone just like that. Facts. You need something that's, that's sturdy. It's going to stay there regardless. So security, saving for a rainy day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is like a, it's a, it's a God humbling. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all them excuses you talking about. Yeah. I bet everybody, it, going, it, it goes through everybody's head like, damn bro, like I should have been Working regardless of how tired I am, fuck that. Thanks. And it makes you think about what's really important in life too, because right. like if it's an apocalypse, like you thinking about that relationship, Bro, you should have talked with, like you should have mm -hmm. healed with somebody, because it could all be over with. Like, ain't no networking. <laughs> nah, <laughs> ain't no networking. No about networking. it. Like I don't really care. Like people care too much. Like even with the beats, like if something in style and you making beats and you don't think, then people don't think it's in style. Why well, care about what they say? Because it's like the same thing as life. Like I live my life because. Bro, if I go tomorrow, did I live a happy life or did I care too much about what people thought? Mm, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah, like, that's how I be thinking about it. And I I treat the music the same way. Like, now, if I want to put the 808 here, like, mm. are people going to fall with it or are they going to be? I don't really think about that. Because I'm not making beats for other producers. I'm making for myself. Thanks. Mm. I done had some beats that be like, well, why did you do that? Because I felt like it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. what, like, that's the whole, that's the same thing with, like, the little, uh, the little what what they call that the UK drill yeah like UK it, it drill like fuck, man. yeah like UK drill at first I'm like what is this right. but then Same, it, it was like hard but mm -hmm. like do y'all think like I got a question for y'all y'all think it's gonna last now the UK pop drill gone. it's up in the air right yeah it's up in the air I think it ain't I think, I think it's, it's influence is always gonna be I there think, like it might not be like the biggest wave yeah you think pop smoke influence gonna be there for a minute right? I, mean, I think, dude, I think I pop I think it. I think pop was really carrying it he had so much more left in him too right that's right. why he was it, just it, getting that's started, why, yeah that's why it hit me when he cause bro I ain't gonna lie like people was like the whole album sound the same but bro like everybody was like rocking with it, was it. and he had it was so hitting. much more like mm -hmm. unreleased music too where he had a different vibe so it kind of blew me that he died though like Cause he definitely was like on something else like, I feel like that sound not the sound not gonna leave bro exactly. because a few years ago, maybe like 2014, 2013, 2012, I've been hearing that sound. Like, that's that's how they rap over there. It's called grime, I believe. Like, yeah, they call grime. it grime. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Grime trap. And I feel like what happened was up north, they kind of caught on to that and started rapping on them beats. And that's what's right. making it seem like it's like, yo, that's the way. But it's like, that's, that's what's normal over there. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? So this shit definitely ain't going nowhere.
Yeah. And okay. it, made, it made glides like not cool. Oh, yeah. Facts. Like, yeah. And then I never heard hi hat patterns like that until I really started listening. They really like, like snares they, though. They like he like they yeah, like they snares. Crazy. I like that shit. That shit I, I made a beat when he died, and I'm like, bro, this low key hard. Right. Like, yeah. you know, like, it's a whole yeah, different like, bounce, it's a whole right. different way. Y'all think Draco um dropped something on a drill beat? He did. He he did. Oh yeah, Drake already did. He did. Oh, he did. He did. Yeah, he did. Oh, and he did it in the accent. It didn't make a lot of noise for like a Drake song. Oh, okay. Yeah, he did that. He, he did put, the put on the whole accent, everything. He did the accent. He, and he always too. talks about like the tings. He's like, that that tings. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we gonna pull it up what, after the podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when was it? When did he drop it? Was that last year? Last year or something like that? Yeah. You might even heard it. He went he went crazy, but he he think he uh what is it? What's the accent? I don't know. I thought it was like Island's accent? Yeah, something like that. But I thought he did that because in Canada they got yeah, kind of like that accent. Yeah, in Canada, yeah. The <laughs> Toronto accent. Or something. Yeah. Mm. Got them things. Yeah, people be asking Hez if he's from Toronto. Really? really? Yeah. Really? Well, because you know French. That's kind of It's cause weird. probably because the islands, they are heavy in They speak French down there. And then up in Canada, they speak French too. So the islands got that. Okay. Be, the um, islands do got to speak French. I never, right? I never really like put sure. two and two together. That's so, crazy. Some of the bro. islands, like there's, there's English islands, like Jamaica's an English yeah. island, there's Spanish oh, islands. Yeah, there's French islands. Okay. Like Haiti was a, is a French country. Mm. Um, little yeah. geography lesson for you. I didn't even ask his that. It's crazy. I didn't even like think of that. He's from the U.S. Virgin Islands, so I don't Thanks. know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, man. Um, let's see. Ah, oh, man, we talked about a lot, man. I feel like sure this is did. one of the this is one of the most important recent podcasts we've done, man. To be honest, yeah. um, I got one like one more thing. Yeah, like, definitely. Producers yeah. don't know about sync checks, bro. Because mm. I just I just mm. got a um my first sync check off of on my block on Netflix, mm. and bro. When I tell you they pay great, mm-hmm. like bro, like if I didn't, me and uh me and Big Core, you know, we made the bank record with Earth Gang. That was mm-hmm. on on my block episode, mm-hmm. yeah. bro. The song was on there for like ten seconds, mm-hmm. but bro, that shit worth twelve thousand dollars. What? Wow. Mm. Ten seconds? Mm. Same shit, bro. Ten seconds. And how that come? Jesus. How that come about? Just kind of um, random. Honestly, bro, like Earth Gang, bro, the whole Earth Gang placement was so crazy because. Big K like he related to one of them so we made the beat and I made the beat for Mulatto actually but she was in a whole another session with uh, another producer so I didn't want to intrude on that so I, you know we we always give each other the beats that we do and he was like when I came back to string cut to uh, have a session they were like bro you got a song with Earth Gang I had no idea who that was I'm like who was that mm. and then once I found out I was like oh J. Yeah, Cole artists, lit. like, yeah, yeah like, they, they, they lit. So mm-hmm. I'm like, this might do something. And then when they dropped the album, it was like, whoa. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It went, like, number 40 on Billboard albums. You know how it's hard to get, oh, excuse me, to get mm-hmm. there, too. Like, mm-hmm. so, like, when they did that, you know, a lot of stuff was going on. People started doing TikToks. People started doing all kinds of stuff. And then after that, I had an email come. And it was the people from On My Block and they were like, hey, like we trying to put this song on On My Block. And I, I don't know what On My Block is. It, apparently, it's a big Netflix show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, On My Block, it's a big Netflix show. It, yeah, I haven't seen it, but everybody watches it. Like everybody okay. was hitting me up like, bro, On My Block, On My Block. So like, yeah, the, the sync checks, that's where the money at. Like even like doing little stuff like for uh, video games and commercials mm-hmm. and all that type of stuff, bro, the sync check, like they'll pay you monthly. That's what producers don't know. Like, you can get a monthly check from like making like little commercial beats and stuff like that. Mm. Mm. That's something I'm about to start doing. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm about to start doing that because the sync check, you could put the sync, you could put the sync in BMI and they give you a big front end. Mm. Mm. Or the BMI pays on it too. Yeah, because people watch the episode. So every time they watch the episode, that's money in your pocket. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's fire. Yeah, so that's how, that's how some producers make big money too off of sync. Like sync checks, to be honest, sync checks hit harder than album placement checks. To be honest with you, like it's ten seconds. What you think would be the best way to even go about that sync route? Would it? It wouldn't be YouTube, would it? Nah, you gotta you gotta have like an inside like, or you could just research like. Yeah, people be looking for out. submissions all the time. Yeah, you'd have to. That's what that people out. don't know. Like people look for submissions all the time. Like I know even uh for two K this year the new one that come out mm-hmm. I'm gonna send beats for two K. Mm-hmm. 
Because I know 2K going to pay. Right. 2K, like, they be like, send beats here to mm-hmm. this email. We going to listen to it. And if we like it, we going to put it on the game. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it for 2K. I'm going to do it for Madden. I'm going to do it for FIFA. I don't care. I'm doing all video game Call of Duty, soundtracks Super this year. Mario, though. say Yeah, less. like, and you know, on, you know, like on 2K Madden, you can have the little trap beats on there. Yeah. Like, yeah. and they don't even got to be five for real. They yeah. be having some sorry beats on there. Like, right. so I'm going to really purposely good. make a sorry beat and I'm going to send it to 2K right. and, and Madden and stuff. And commercials, that's like when, uh, what's his name said, uh, S1 said his biggest check, or well, one of the biggest checks came from that uh, Trident gum commercial. Damn. Remember when he said he got, they submitted their beats for like a oh, Trident yeah, national yeah, yeah, commercial yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. That's, yeah it, he said that was one of a fat check. <laughs> you know, the, the thing with 2K though, they, they announced it, they said it, it probably won't be a 2K this year because what? of the, the huh? you know how they shut the NBA down and shit? Oh, nah, I ain't Are you playing about it? I was like, nah, 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 nah. I was like, what the hell? Ain't no well, you know, I'm a big 2K, 2K player, man. Hey, I'm over there like, what? <laughs> like, nah, take no my 2- YouTube away, man. Yeah, <laughs> no 2K, I'm finished. I don't, uh, I'll tell you what I tell you, it's just beats and 2K for me, bro. Like, Sunday, I'm not gonna lie, Sundays I'll be up to 7 in the morning just on 2K, bro. Like, bro, bro. yeah, I'm my Sheesh. player, bro. Like, I ain't, like, I've been trying to get more in touch with my followers lately and you know a great way to do that is on the game because yeah. like I get on the game with Play someone somebody. yeah if that, now I ain't gonna lie I be having a lot of DMs and stuff people be trying to send me melodies and loops all the time bro on God like this somebody is a secret this, like, yeah. no, this, no this is a secret this is a secret <laughs> to get to me bro if you get on 2K and you hard and you a producer and you want to send me something, bro, I'm, a, I'm going to take it. Thanks. Right. Because mm. you a valuable player to me on the game like I, I ain't gonna lie I have some more gym. partners like network with other people through the through the game. Mm. It's all kinds of ways to network, bro. Everybody play the game. Like if you Damn. get on there and you actually talking to someone and you cool, they gonna mess with you. I just had a producer the other day send me loops just off of the fact that he played good in 2K. Mm. And he was sorry, I don't I don't know about all that. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna take them loops if you can't play the game. Oh, you, you gotta come you gotta <laughs> come yeah, you with gotta, it. You gotta come with it. But that's like it's a the networking just goes all across. Like yeah, it's just, it's way more than just emailing, bro. I just want everybody to know that. Like it's always a way to network. Like mm-hmm. that's period. real outside the box. Yeah, that's, that's a gym. yeah on like the game. That. Like yeah. it's crazy. Like like that. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, man. Um, I guess we'll leave it off, man. So just with the the way twenty twenty is going so far, people that want to be in your position, what's the best advice you could give to them right now? I know you've given them a lot of crazy advice, but is there anything you could leave them with? Really, just really just have your own lane. And, and be consistent with whatever you want to do, like whether that's selling beats or maybe you want to learn how to make drums and sell drum kits or just be a loop maker. Think about a different way to market your loops or to just, you know, cause bro, like everybody does the, can I send loops? I got fire loops. Right, bro, right. think of a different way to do it. Like, I ain't gonna lie. If I, bro, like if I had somebody come in my DMs and be like, bro, I give five dollars if you take this loop. Facts. <laughs> you gonna? I'm gonna be like, shit. All right, come on, let go. Let's <laughs> right. let's do it. I'm gonna listen to it. Not saying you gotta get everybody five dollars, but if you got a certain producer that you're trying to get to, maybe saying that or uh, had them like, oh, he really want to get these loops to me. You feel right. me? Like it's it's all kinds of different ways to market <laughs> rather than being like, right. bro, let me send you this. This is fire, bro. Everybody thinks they stuff hard. Facts. Like it's it's all kinds of different ways. That's to gonna do catch it. Like, attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like just think outside the box. It don't even right. have to deal right. with money. Like even when even when you selling beats, bro, do discounts. You know what I'm saying? I do discounts. I do buy buy two get two free. You know, buy right. three get this. And some people take advantage of it, and some people don't. I don't do buy one get one. That's kind of that's kind of pointless. I'm just mm-hmm. giving away stuff at that point. But like definitely just think outside the box and, and just do stuff for your for your followers and stuff like that. Like I do giveaways, I do uh beat critiques. And when I do beat critiques, I give away money. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, why we, I have yeah, 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 yeah. Like I give away money when I do it. Like I give away a hundred dollars, fifty dollars, like I just do yeah. that. That bring the whole the whole producer hood out. Right. Like right. they be like, bro, we're gonna get this money. Like, right. I, like that's just how I be doing stuff. So like to really just be think outside the box, like be an innovator. Like mm-hmm. don't just try to copy somebody's lane. Like that's just one thing about this producer community. Like you can be influenced by somebody. Like Rex, my boy, you feel me? But everybody is trying to replicate this man's sound, and I right. know he's yeah. like annoyed by that because y'all are trying to sound like me. Like just go with your own lane, bro. It's only one of everybody. It's only one you. It's only one you. It's only mm-hmm. one me. Like mm-hmm. just be your own person, and it'll work out for you. Cause that's what I had to do. Like mm-hmm. I try to follow somebody's footsteps that wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. Maybe selling beats online ain't for you. Maybe you can do something else to doing that. Mm-hmm. Like 
maybe you could sell beats through Facebook or sell beats through Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody has their own lane. That's what I would tell people Mm -hmm. because everybody just sees one person doing it. Like I have people be like, bro, I'm doing the same thing you're doing. It's not working. But it'll be just a couple days though. Like, <laughs> right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, bro, just be patient and right. it'll be all right. So like, yeah. bro, I put I put a whole year in before I <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like a whole year a struggling year at that. Right. I was struggling last year, like, bro. <laughs> Niggas come to you three months in. Bro, yeah, three like, months in. It's, it's it's not doing this, like, bro. Y'all don't understand. Like, y'all seen the dude, his name is uh Dean Grizz Grizz uh he's big on YouTube, he's like one of the motivational guys, a big marketer. Dean Grizz. It's a lot of motivators. Mm. Uh, oh, I forget his name, but he said you got to pay a su- success tax. Mm. I was like, mm. he said, success big tax. truth, yeah, big yeah. truth. So like when he was young, he went through a bunch of stuff. Like his dad had ended up like being depressed. He had to take over his dad's shop. It got closed. He had to do this, broke all this. He's like, what I learned is I just paid my success tax at a young age. So like a lot of people want to get to this level, but you got to pay your success success tax so, by putting in the time. Right, exactly. In, yeah, and he said, imagine mm-hmm. if you had someone up there checking off the box, like, okay. He tried the beat stores. It didn't work. Okay. Oh, but he still woke up, had a positive attitude, and said, you're going to try this next thing. Okay. Check, check, check. Mm-hmm. And then eventually you're going to run into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think a big thing big too sense. is like, don't be afraid to pivot and try new things, but make sure you put, make sure you actually put your all into it and, yeah. and really yeah, like try that's, it. Like, that's a big thing. Three days in of doing a beat store, don't just hang it up. Be like, it's don't, over with. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You, you might gotta, have to put eight months in you and then stay. hang it up. Think even about even it. three months, Thank even you. even two years, three years. Some right. people, Some people just... They look at it. You think this phone was created in three days, bro? Right, no, right, bro. Right. They had to go from the <laughs> iPhone with no front camera, bro. Like, right. come on now. It's all about timing, bro. Like, you got to just be patient. Like, people hate to hear that, though, because they be like, I want, I want this and I want it now. Right. It doesn't work like that, bro. I don't know anybody who had something like that happen to them, mm-hmm. bro. Like, for real. So, that was what I'll tell people at home because I hope this interview really, like, had them be like, all right, bro, just let me chill. Let me just be patient because it didn't, bro. This did not happen overnight, bro. I had a whole long struggle with this, like, from when I first started to now. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just now getting right, and it's, what, four years later? Mm-hmm. So, come on now. That's a long time. Crazy, man. Thanks. I'm going to let it be known, man. I'm going to put it up on the story right now. We never did this before, man, but... Super Gang. important episode right here. Most man. important. Super important. Make sure y'all tune in. But hell yeah, man. We appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all for bringing me in, man. And Chamber. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another dope episode in the books, man. We yeah. Oh, well, 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 first, let them know where they go follow. It's going to be in the description below, but. Oh, them... yeah. Uh, Instagram, at Chamberlain100 underscore. That's it. Just one underscore. All right. Let it up, man. Yes, sir. Signing up. Peace, y'all.